Hi, welcome back to the van conversion. We're gonna be looking at fitting the rear seats in today. Obviously being a panel van, there was nothing here before, but we need some seats in here so we can all fit in. So if you follow us on Instagram or Facebook, uh, you have probably seen the seats we've purchased. Uh, the seats are from a Ford uh, Custom, it's like the small transit and they're from the Tornio range which is a bit like a basically like a small minibus. But today's job is to get the tracking fitted to the floor ready for the seats. So seats clip into these uh, brackets here, there's two per seat and uh, they've kind of got a quick release mechanism and all sorts of features to change the position of the seats. So the first job we've got to do is decide exactly where the seats are going to go. One thing we've got to account for is a table which will be hinged off uh, that corner that, or that side wall there. Uh, so we want to make sure that can swing up without going underneath um, where it's quite tricky to film. Where you see these spot welds here and here between those two, there is a structural member of the chassis which runs that way. So obviously we can't put any bolts in this area because we won't be able to fit a nut underneath. So we want to stay behind here for one. And the bolts at the front, again there's another one going across that way so we want to make sure we're away from that. And on the sides, just to be even more awkward, there's two that run the length of the vehicle and we want to miss those as well. So we're that that's limited where we can put these chairs. Uh, Dad's coming over today, and this is right up his street. He's used to all sorts of mechanical things. He's an engineer by trade, and he's built and worked on everything from motorbikes to aircraft carriers. So hopefully, between the two of us, we can get this sorted, and I'll be able to show you what they look like when they're finished.
But that took far too long. What we thought would be an hour or two turned into four or five hours. Uh, but everything is in place. So the rails are bolted down now. Uh, they have high tensile bolts that go through uh, the the kind of holes here. Then underneath we've got the reinforcing sort of steel structure underneath. And then as usual we've gone completely overkill under here. Uh, most of the uh, advice and recommendations ask for a, a flat plate of steel which is around 100 by 100 mil uh, of th between 3 and 5 mil steel. There's just various bits of advice out there. We had this steel here from some structural work in the house. It's about 7 or 8 mil thick. It is I think 80 mil wide and we've put it as one long bar. So way overkill, but I'd rather have it like that. And you can see underneath there, the there's washers and then some nylon nuts. So with all the measuring we did and but kind of all the hurdles we came across, I didn't really film it in too much detail because I was trying to, we were teaching ourselves as we went along really. We were trying to position the, the tracks in the valleys of the kind of ribbed floor. Uh, a couple of them didn't, so I ended up having two bits of steel flat underneath to bring it up to the same height. But anyway, everything is rock solid now. Uh, like I said, really overkill with that steel underneath. We're also either side of a chassis member, so in a, in, at the very worst, even with the spreader plate on top at the front to prevent it punching down, and the big steel at the back to prevent it coming up, um, it can't go very far because uh, there is the, that sh structural member as well between them, so I think we've covered all bases. Uh, we, I looked at sort of the spec for uh, track cars, racing cars, off-road, you know, the, the most um, tested sort of vehicles and, and everything was calling for, you know, square plate washers around 100 mil square, three mil steel. So we've you know, we've gone way over the top, but you know, the kids are going in the back and I'd rather do it that way. So the methodology was as follows. We clipped the seats into the tracking, positioned them where we wanted them. We then, rather bizarrely, had the idea to use a glue gun, so some hot glue. So I actually glued the tracks down once we'd got the seats exactly where we wanted them. Because of course, when you unclip the seats, things can move a little bit. So we were measuring from the front uh, kind of bottom of the bulkhead area to the back to make sure we we're parallel. We then had a steel uh, along them as a straight edge to make sure they were all in line. We then measured between the tracks to make sure they were parallel. I would have used a centre punch, couldn't find one in the garage, so we ended up using a really thin uh, bit on the drill to drill a pilot in each of the holes. We then removed the tracks and drilled uh, 12 mil holes through. So we were then through the steel floor. I mean, this is so thin, I don't know what it is, a mil and a half or so. So you fly straight through that stuff. But then of course we needed the steel underneath to be exactly right. So what we ended up doing is I held it up from underneath, uh, put a, a crayon, like a wax crayon, through the hole to mark it. Now, rather than mark all three in that fairly imprecise way, we marked to the centre one, bolted the steel up with a kind of, as a dry fit. Then we used a, a, the small drill bit to get it exactly right in the middle. Fortunately, the holes and the way that these tracks work, there are uh, there's a little bit of movement to get it all aligned. So we were able to do that. Um, but everything is, uh, you know, millimetre perfect as you can imagine with Dad over here. So these were an eBay purchase, so I never actually saw them in the original vehicle. But it's quite clear that this outer sort of flange, I guess, of the rail sits visibly on top of the uh, carpet or vinyl or whatever your finished surface is. So that distance between where the battens will sit on the raised part of the floor and the underside of the uh, the edging of here of the rail is uh, going to it's 35 mil, which 
with my calculations, gives me my 20mm batten on the floor, my 12mm plywood, and then 3mm of the vinyl flooring. So that's going to make these sit nice and tight down onto the floor, but still be in contact with the metal and, and the steel underneath. So it should be quite tidy. The idea is to have this double seat in for the vast majority of the time, because that's all we need as a family. Um, this seat over here, they're sold as a three, so I thought we may as well put these rails in, but I'm going to sink them slightly so I can make a capping piece that sits in there and then we can just have a, a little mat here by the door. So after all of the measurements and the tweaking to get it absolutely perfect, we've now got to a point now where they're all exactly level with each other. The ends are exactly in line and we're completely parallel with the van. So without further ado, let's get them in and see what they look like. It's such a satisfying clunk when they go in. Then you've got to toggle, just like in people carriers, toggle in the front if you're collapsing it yourself, otherwise there's one behind which you can pull and then put the seats up. Pretty comfortable. So, I mean, yes, they're gonna feel like a car seat traveling, but they're gonna be as safe as a car seat, hopefully. So, um, you know, they're not just like a flat, simple bench seat with a lap belt or whatever. The other thing is, when, when you're fitting them like this, you need to get them signed off by a mechanic uh, to say that they're, they're safe, they're done properly, and that they would pass it with will power CMOT. And I checked this with our um, garage. He said it, what we were going to do was exactly what they were going to do, although that they suggested using smaller plates of steel. We just kind of gone one step further. They said it's absolutely fine. Pop it down there. They'll check that it meets all the MOT criteria. We'll then need to change it with the DVLA um, on the vehicle details and with our insurance company. But, you know, we, we've done as much as we can ourselves and just hand over to the professionals to double check it for us. So I'm going to get that final seat in and then have a tidy up. Now I wanted space to be able to open the sliding door and get past this one without having to mess with the seats. So we've gone really tight. I don't know what it's like in the Ford, but you know, these two bits here are almost touching, but that's fine. They click in together. And then hopefully, this won't hit the other one. It's about two or three mil, which looks good to me. So with that third one in, it, it is a bit tight to get round. If I open the side door, I can just about get through to the back without moving it. But of course there's a lever here, so we can collapse it down like that. It makes it much easier to get through. To make it even easier, we can fold the whole unit up with a sidebar clip. And then you've got loads of space to get through. So there we go, seats are in. That was a lot of work. I'm hoping the rest of the van isn't quite so tricky because my brain cells got a bit fried today. I'll do a separate video when it comes to the details of the seats. We looked at various options, various price points, safety issues and, and fitting issues. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'll cover that in a separate one. But for now, these are in. We can now travel as a family. And the next video, I think we're gonna be looking at battening the floor and beginning the insulation so thanks for watching remember if you can do it yourself and we'll see you in the next one